Hi there, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me once again. So today we have something completely new, um, it's the uh, Tacom FV432 Fighting Vehicle, Armoured Vehicle and the Mark II Stroke 1 version of it, plus the Chieftain Mark V, uh, one of my favourite all-time tanks if I'm honest. Um, now this uh, particular uh, kit was actually a Christmas gift on Christmas Day so I was very pleased to get this. <laughs> uh, it's nice, I, I'm, I'm Slight capacity problem. I've talked about this in the past where I've got some wonderful kits that I want to build. Um, some of them are quite big and I, I just can't find the room for them. So this was the perfect gift because I can squeeze these in somewhere. I'm sure I'll find a home once I've built them. So the chances are, yes, I'll build these too. And it's something from Tacom, which I've never actually built a Tacom kit before. So well, there we go. Anyway, without further ado, it's kit number, mm, they're calling it 03.015008. I think that's correct, yes it is. And we have the artwork on the side, it shows as follows. We've got the armoured fighting vehicle and it is in the colours of... It says unknown unit but it's, it's a, the British Army, that's for sure. Um, and then we have got the... Uh, and this is a very interesting point about the Chieftain. Um, it's actually an Iranian Chieftain. Now, I, I personally wasn't aware that we'd sold these to the Iranians and I guess this was in the late 70s when the Shah was still running Iran. Uh, the Americans, of course, in one of my other videos, I mentioned, sold the Tomcats to the Iranians just before the fall of the Shah, which was very unfortunate. I think something similar happened here. And it says here, the uh, Iranian Mark V at the Battle of Shalamat Shalamansh, uh, preceding the liberation of Karamashah. Pardon if I get these pronunciations wrong. The 242nd Battalion, the 4th Brigade, Operation Beit al Maquadas in May 1983. So this was a real big battle against the Iraqis. <laughs> this is the Iran-Iraq War in the early 80s. So, very interesting item. On the other side of the kit we have got uh, quite, a, quite a good sort of almost like a photographic style a uh, call out showing the sprue trees themselves for both the kits and it's this two-in-one kit format which again I'm not that familiar with uh, it seems odd to me to get two models in one box but I'm not complaining very welcome it was so let's have a look at what we got pop that box over there and oh so we've got some uh, rather nice looking instructions and nice looking bags. I think we can be able to open these because A, I'm going to probably build this anyway, and B, I think they're resealable bags. Yes, they are. That's great. So, starting with the instructions. Now, instructions from manufacturers I'm not familiar with has not been going very well recently. Some of you may have seen my recent uh, look at the AFV Club Scorpion tank, which had fairly poor instructions. Not the worst, but not great. And then we have the Kinetic Harrier, GR1, GR3, and the instructions were really dire, I thought. They were the most horrible printed mess I've ever seen. Just like, like a photocopy from the local print shop. Uh, yeah, not really acceptable in 2020, so stroke 2021. But anyway, let's see what these guys have got. First of all, a little tiny bag decals inside. So let's see what this contains. Okay. Oh yes. Okay, so we don't, we don't actually give you a British alternative for the Chieftain, I don't think, which is a bit of a shame. I might have to get some aftermarket, I think. I'm sure we ran this and up until the Challenger arrived. But anyway, um, very nice little uh, little decals. Doesn't say who makes them. I think it's Tacom's own. We've got some little tiny Union Jacks. I think that's for the. Uh, is that for the Sherman? Uh, for the Sherman. For the Chieftain? Not sure. Not sure. Um, you've got some. It looks like a British registration number, so it probably is actually. There probably is an option for it. So let's hope so. But they're nice little decals. Um, can't find anything wrong with those, to be honest. Pop that back in there. Then we have got a tiny bag. Sorry, I'm not doing this very well for the camera, I have to say. We've got a tiny little bag here, which includes 
all your photo etch parts. I'm having some issues with that. There we go. So we've got a number of grills and grates, which is quite nice. Then we have some, this is definitely for the Chieftain. This is your side armour for the Chieftain. It gives you an idea of the size of the tank, it's not going to be big. And then we have more grills and grates, and I think this is actually the, the top protection anti RPG area for the armoured personnel carrier. It builds up into like a, you can see it here, it builds up into this like a cage around to protect you from RPG hits. So, let's have a proper look at these instructions and I'm hoping for good things. It's got a nice, a nice quality feel to it, I've got to say. Let's have a look inside. And bear in mind, I'm not familiar with Tackle at all. Uh, right, okay, it tells you how to, um, to operate your decals, how to remove your PE, and it shows the parts trees, again, as per the box. And then, oh, these look nice instructions, these look like a three-dimensional, almost photographic style. So you're building up your, your tub. What we start with here. So this is the Chieftain, doesn't make it overly clear. Just, it just starts construction, it doesn't say which one's which. Okay. Anyway, you're building up your tub. Uh, it's not a bathtub style, it's a, it's a wall and floor style. Uh, building up all your road wheels onto your bogies and your idler wheels going on. Putting them into the, uh, the chassis, the tub you've just built. Then you've got your dry sprockets and your idler wheels. And then you're building up your length and link track system. Um, it looks like there's kind of a jig. I guess it's a jig for doing this. Yeah, it's a jig system. Then these go onto the, uh, the wheel assemblies. Then you put your lower track centre section in and it shows you how it should look like when it's finished. The top of the hole comes down onto the main chassis and then you're building up your various add-on exterior sections. So you've got stowage boxes and uh, some of the parts that go on the side of the turret and the rear of the chassis. Just bring you out of touch. There we go. Uh, those then go on, those ones that you just built. Then we've got lots of little PE pieces I think here. Um, we've got some protection for the lights, so it's anti, you know, to protect it from missile hits etc. or undergrowth. You've got a hatch that you can have open or close for the driver. Driver sits right in the middle on the chieftain. It's quite a good position to have. Then there's a little tiny like a shelf that goes on here. So you see in a few tanks actually where they can actually stow things at the front like water or petrol cans. Then you've got your side armour uh, sort of skirt protection that goes to help protect the wheels. Then you've got some stowage boxes that are going on the exterior. There. Then you've got more stowage boxes. You've got um, towing cable and you've got the same being repeated really on the other side as what you've just done. Then you start to build up your chieftain turret which is this very slim, slender, low line, one of the first types, uh, certainly British tank, to have this very you know, low profile, slender look to the turret like they are now. But you could argue it's more slender than the modern Challenger is because that's quite chunky at the front. You're building up your cupola and your hatches going in. Then you've got your commander's hatch going on top there. And then finally we get to the gun. So you've got your big cannon going in. And then the bottom of the base of the turret going in. And then you've got a lot of parts to add on here. A lot of stowage boxes to add in. Uh, bringing in all these um, shell, shell catch baskets for the shells that get spewed out the side and you've got an um, all-purpose all machine gun going on top and then the various uh, stowage boxes that go onto the sides and the, and the back of the turret itself. I'm loving these instructions, they're excellent. They're so three-dimensional and well-printed. Kinetic, please take note, okay? <laughs> there you go. I've said it, I'll move on. Storage box on the side of the uh, the main turret going on the side there, and then finally now you've got your turret all completed. You bring that together into your main 
chassis and that's the chieftain and finished you just need to paint and decal it then without explaining it it then moves on to the second kit uh, which is the armoured personnel carrier and you're building up your tub putting in your dry sprockets then you've got your chassis to work on putting in your suspension and rollers which continues on the other side as well you can see the shock absorbers there dampers as well in the suspension system Then we've got the, the big door at the back because it's like the American style of armoured personnel carrier that has a huge door so the, the troops can jump in and out quickly. Uh, storage boxes at the back that go on the rear just out above the mud guards. Then you're putting your main driving wheels in. Uh, idler sprockets and dry sprockets going on there. Then it's track time again and you've got this jig to put it all into. Build it into the jig like so, and then they come out the absolute perfect shape and angles. Your length, mid, mid length track at the bottom goes in here, and that's your tracks completed. And it should just look exactly like in the photo. Illustration. It is almost a photo, that's what's so good about it actually. I'm, I'm liking these instructions, they're really good. It's not quite wing nut wheels, uh, wing nut wings, but it's it's not far off. It's just lacking the colour and the uh, the history. <laughs> um, All-purpose machine gun going on here onto your rotating ring on the uh, the gunner's turret, and then we've got the driver's uh, hatch, which is splittable. It's got these great big uh, pivot anchors, um, hinges, I should say, not anchors, that go on it and uh, enable it to open. Uh, in fact, sorry, this is like, um, I say it's the, to com the commanders, it's not, is it? I'm thinking it's the tank again, it's not, it's the, the hole on the top of the armoured personnel carrier has this great massive hatch, and you can see there, um, it goes in the middle and plugs up uh, the centre of the vehicle. So I guess if they wanted to, they could exit this pretty quickly out the front and the top. And then you've got all these ancillary parts, like there's an air filter there, it's on a stalk for when they go through water uh, for the engine and then you've got storage boxes, you've got tools, spades, lights you've got, then you've got the front section with another great big hatch, there's a lot of access hatches you can certainly get out of this quick I think, no problem front top, front rear and the top and then you bring it all together and you've got your top of your hull and your front of your hull onto the main hull and then you're building it up with your exhaust system, which is huge down the side. And then you've got all the storage boxes going in there. And then finally, this I mentioned this mesh cage. And again, there's a little um, uh, you've got you've got um, a system for actually making it the correct shape and the correct angle, um, like you do with the tracks. Uh, which is really clever actually because it means you can't really go wrong um, it's a jig again basically a jig and then that goes on uh, to protect the crew when they come out of the hatch as you can see uh, and then that's it finished so then you're onto your painting so here we go this lovely colour this is again getting a bit wing nut wings fashion not not quite to their standard but it's, it's going in the right direction isn't it it's very impressive like a photo uh, it shows all the call outs which are in MIG colours which is a bit unfortunate but anyway um, you've got two versions there. You've got an Iranian version, and I think the first one is the British version. Um, unknown unit, Batus, 1991. Well, that sounds like it might not be British. It sounds like it's the Iranians again. Uh, and then you've got this battle, famous battle version here, from the Iran-Iraq war. And basically, the way I'm reading this, when we'd had done with our chieftains we sold them on to the Iranians while we moved on to the Challenger and then you've got your armoured personnel carrier and it's got the Royal, Royal Scots Guards yeah or the unknown unit with the more darker conventional NATO camouflage and then O4 which is a branch of NATO and then that's it you've got a lot of adverts for other products so that's that um, it's quite long, isn't it, for a small kit, 170 second scale armour, it's, uh, it's quite impressive. Uh, it's impressive anyway, I think that's one of the best instruction manuals I've seen. It'd just be nice if they said Chieftain and then 
the other the other one, the FE four three two, instead of just carrying on as if it's all one kit. It's a bit, it's a bit confusing, but the visual images look very clear. I think that's a, a nice instruction. So, where do we begin? Because obviously we've got two vehicles here. Let's start here. We've got the. I say we will take them out of the. Um, we will take them out of the bags for you. Just going to pop that there, um, and I'll bring in the box for you to have a look at. There we go. Like so, and I definitely need to get this back in its bag somehow. Maybe later. Let's have a look at what we got then. Chieftain. So it's the Chieftain's turret. Let's have a close look. It looks fabulous, I've got to say. Very, very detailed. Yes, lots of fine detail on the side. All the little, little mini hatches, like there's one here at the back, you can see. Very, very nicely engraved. Shape looks good. That's lovely. You know, considering how small that is in the palm of my hand, it's absolutely fantastic. Superb moulding. So I'm impressed with that for starters. Great start. Okay. Turn this around a bit. There we go. First bag. Big old sprue this time. Big sprue, yeah. And this has got the other personnel carrier sprue parts in it. So I think we'll do him after because we did get the chieftain here, didn't we? So let's do chieftain first and have a personnel carrier second. So, moving on the chieftain theme, we have got a big old sprue. Oh, yes. Oh, it's actually two sprues in one bag. So we've got, oh, these are lovely. Oh, we're in for a treat here. Look at this. Look at the detail. As soon as I picked it up, I could feel how finely sharply moulded it was. The tracks look stunning. They're really, really nice. Look at the other side. Yeah. Those are beautiful. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was given this as a gift for, for free. Oh my God, Santa was really good to me this year. Look at this. You've got the engine. That's really nice. You've got these like uh, there's three different versions here. Of the, I think it's the back, isn't it, where they've got tow cables. And then uh, you've got the drive road wheels here. And they look really nice. Uh, it's flawless. Really nice, those tracks are brilliant. Look at the individual links here. They're absolutely superb. Those are sharp as you like as well. Got some kind of, uh, these are like the idler wheels here. Look at that. That's a lovely sprue. And then that's actually repeated this sprue 13. And then we've got, so we won't bother about that, uh, it's, it's the lower part of this one. Well, let's, let's focus on the um, the main hull parts and it is again it is absolutely exquisite fine fine detail especially on these grills and grates where the engine is at the rear you know you've got little uh, hinges that are visible with like fuel caps um, you've got the driver's hatch there at the side or at the front in the middle I should say ah, that's just amazing Oh, it's really, really nice. I say I've not had a tack on kit before, not me personally, not reviewed one before. Um, and in this smaller scale, I think this is fabulous. So there we go, that's that one and that one. Let's just pop them back in. That, uh, that main hull piece is just amazing. Stick that in there, that's in 
Really awesome. Okay, very good. Next, now I've got this is the one that's got the other all the other parts of the chicken in it. So the bags are so well done, but they're very subtle how they open. You've got to look very carefully where the join is. There we go. Right, let's come out again. Okay. Oh, right, okay. That's not what I expected. Um, strange the way they put it in the bag, actually. So, we have got, got the, the bottom and rear of the turret, the lower turret. And again, you know, this is an area you're probably not going to see, but you've got some lovely detail there, despite that. Then you've got, I think this is the mounting for the gun. It'd be that way up, of course. That way up. And then we've got all the stowage boxes and some of the additional grills and things. Over here we've got some of this caging and uh, sort of basket work that goes around the turret for it to hold uh, the shell cases and various items. It uh, acts like a sort of a deck area, which is quite good. And the box that goes on the side of the turret there. The other sprue. Got the gun here, and again the moulding of this is just exquisite. It's just superb. Can you see the detail on that? Absolutely beautiful. Then you've got these uh, the cupola and the hatch. Again, more of this um, sort of basket and uh, sort of lattice uh, work for on the outside of the turret. You've got all the storage boxes here at the top. You've got the back of the tank there, the back of the hull. Drive from the gearbox here. And you've got all your little ca cables, look at these cables, they're so fine. That's remarkable. And then you've got so many small parts that are just beautiful. There's no flash on any of them. These, these here, this is the um, jig for producing, uh, to mount up your it's not part of the actual tag, it's just a jig for mounting the wheels in the correct position. So it looks absolutely brilliant. You've got smoke discharges here. Look how small these parts are, they're tiny. They're so nicely done. And uh, other side you've got the... Um, so that's the, the tip of the gun, where my finger is, that's the... Sorry. My finger here, that's the muzzle of the gun there. It's exquisite, really. It's really, really fine. Sharp in the modern style. Very, very sharp, in fact. Okay, so that is the Chieftain, which I think is stunning, to be honest. Flawless. Now we've got the armoured personnel carrier. I don't think there's any chieftain parts on these sprues. Pretty sure it's just APC. So what have we got? Again, look at the fineness. So again we have a, uh, a jig, a small one this time obviously. Uh, and there's some uh, ejector pins here which need cutting off. I'm pretty sure they need to come off. But you may not, not need to bother because it is just a jig. It's a functional item. It's not part of the kit. It's just to help you build it. Then we've got the sides of the chassis here, and this has got a big hatch on the side there. Here we've got the top of the uh, of the chassis complete with all the, the vents and the grills for the engine. And again, this fine, fine, fine detailing here. It's very sharp. This is the rear with the, the open door, which the troops jump in and out of. Oh, sorry, no, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. That's the front hatch, not the rear hatch. Here's the rear hatch, which is much, I was just thinking it looks a bit small. That's the rear hatch with the big door on the back. And there is the actual door itself. Uh, there's the hatch for the front. I just, I just got confused with. <laughs> this is the jig here for building the, uh, the cage, the safety cage, the mesh cage for the 
troops to get in and out and observe through without getting hit by sniper fire or grenades or whatever. And then you've just got lots and lots of absolutely tiny fine parts which seem to go on forever. You've got towing cables, you've got little hatches, you've got lights here. Hatch covers, cupolas, and then you've got you know, the bottom, you've got your stowage boxes here. Split hatch for the main hatch section there. It's lovely, really, really nice. I mean, it's for the scale. I've never seen a, a tank at this scale, same size as a matchbox kit, but it's on a totally different level to them. Uh, obviously, you'd expect that, it is 50 years later. But this is the way it should be, you know, that's the sort of standard that we should expect today. Injection moulding, sort of at its finest, really. It's just to create that level of detail on a kit that is so, so small, that really requires some effort on the part of the manufacturer, rather than just get it roughly the right shape and then just pump it out the door, which is what a lot of them do, I promise. And then last brew, it's a lot of the small detail parts for the chassis here. And hoping this is going to be a challenge again. It's a very big bag for very small parts actually. There we go. Right, there's two that are identical. So it's the tracks. Oh, again, beautiful, beautiful tracks. Look at these. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Really, really good. And then you get your wheels. A really nice sprocket drive and idler wheels are all there. You got little hatches, little boxes. You've got all the various pivots and uh, hatch pivots, and then you've got all your. Uh, I think what are those actually? What are, what are those? Are they links? Yeah, it's, it's sorry, it's the. Uh, <laughs> it's just the way they're presented. These are the um, tiny little links for the tracks. Which are very small, we need a good glasses on to work on this model, I can tell you. Definitely. Lots of tiny, tiny parts. I mean, it's, it's kind of breathtaking. It's almost like you're going to need your... You're going to need your super magnifiers to build this kit, yeah? Because it's all so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way, it's tiny, but it's clean and it's sharp and it's uh, crisp, very, very crisp. Got to be the nicest armour I've ever seen at this scale. No question, none at all. Uh, and again, it's 72 scale, so they're getting sort of with the project that people like Airfix are doing and uh, uh, and competing with them. So there we go. I'm uh, sorry it was a little bit long-winded because the parts are so fine it's quite hard. You've got to look at them and think, what is that? <laughs> uh, they're so tidy. It takes a bit of working out exactly what we're looking at, you know. So many springs as well. It's a beautiful kit. It really is. Um, that's got to be the nicest armour kit uh, in a small scale that I've ever seen. No question whatsoever. So, so thank you to the person who gave me that for Christmas and I recommend it to you very, very strongly. I think based, just based on the inbox review, that's 10 out of 10. No hesitation in saying that at all. It looks awesome, frankly. Beautiful. Very nice. Anyway, I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 and give me a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and share the video. And don't forget to ding the notification bell so you see other videos that are upcoming in the near future. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, you'll probably sure to enjoy the ones that follow it. So thanks a lot. Sorry if I was a bit, a bit long-winded there, but it's quite a, an intensive kit with a lot of parts, two vehicles, quite a lot to look at. Uh, other ones will be much shorter in the future. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me anyway, and uh, between now and the next video, please stay safe. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot and bye for now.